So in this video, we're gonna be covering the new S15S-TH-KQ temperature and humidity sensor. Uh, so this is an IO link device and it monitors the temperature, humidity, and dew point of the environment that it's installed in. So in this demo, we're gonna show you how to configure the device and a couple things about the sensor. So here we have it connected to an IO-Link Master, it's the DXM R94K IO-Link Master. And via that IO-Link Master, we're connected to our PC via an Ethernet cord set. An interesting thing about this sensor is the ability for it to discrete, uh, turn on a discrete output on the sensor itself uh, on pin two, which is the white wire. So what we have here is a K50 light that could be actuated via that discrete output on pin two on that white wire uh, that's connected to the iLink device. So we're gonna show you how to configure this. We're also gonna dive into how to uh, set up the alarm thresholds, how to read in the configuration of the device in the iLink configuration software. So let's dive into that. So as you can see here, we've got a DXM R94K, the new iLink temperature and humidity sensor, we have our light connected. And it's all connected via a parallel wired splitter. So first, let's cover how to configure the sensor. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is download the iLink configuration software on the Banner Engineering website. It can be found under the tab called Software on the Banner Engineering website, and it is free to download. Once it's downloaded, we're gonna click Connect. We're gonna select Ethernet as we're connected to an Ethernet iLink master, and then we're gonna hit Scan. The subnet to scan will be 192.168.0. As this is the default IP address of the device. Out of the box, the DXMR 94K has an IP address of 192.168.0.1. Then let's click go. We'll be able to find the IP address here for the iLink device, iLink master, the DXMR 94K, and we're just going to click confirm and then connect. So it's a nice feature about our IOLink software is that it automatically goes to IODD Finder via an API to automatically recognize the device that's connected to the IOLink master and install the IODD file for the IOLink device automatically. As you can see, I already have the IOLink IODD file installed for the temper and humidity sensor. If you want to do this manually, you could go to load IODD uh, here and you could download the IODD files for all of Banner's iLink devices on the Banner website. Usually this is not necessary though, as the API allows you to search for uh, the IODD automatically, it makes it very hands-off. So uh, let's go into the iLink device and look at our parameters. To read the configuration of the iLink device, we're gonna select read parameters. If we go to process data mode, here's where we could select if we wanna read the temperature values uh, in Fahrenheit or in Celsius. So we could select different smart, pro, uh, smart sensor profiles for reading the values in, in Celsius or Fahrenheit. So if I go over to process data tab, I could see the temperature values, the dew point values, and the relative humidity values coming in. If I wanted to read these values in Celsius, I'd simply select this as a sensor, a smart sensor profile, Celsius. We could all, what we could also do is do a floating point uh, process data mode for Fahrenheit and Celsius. By writing this to the sensor, we'll be able to read the process data scaled in the process data in. As you can see in this room currently, it's 74.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Another thing that's unique about this sensor is that we could do program it to have a discrete output on the white wire, pin two, when a certain threshold is exceeded on the temperature value, the humidity value, or the dew point value. So if we go to alarm configuration, we could set those thresholds for that discrete output to turn on on the sensor, to turn on or actuate that light that we have connected. So in this case, I'm gonna select a high threshold of 60 degrees. We're above 60 degrees in this room right now, so that discrete output is gonna turn on, as you can see, via the light. 
What we could also do on the sensor, if you want to return the device to factory default settings, you could do an application reset. This will restore the sensor to factory default settings while retaining communication to the iLink master. And this is what I typically recommend for setting the device to factory default settings. If you select back to box, that'll restore the device back to factory default settings, but you will lose communication to the iLink device. If you have any questions on this device, feel free to reach out to us at BannerEngineering.com. Thanks very much.